Hi, everybody. Happy New Year. Good evening. Our last break of the night is going to be 2022 Bowman Draft Baseball Jumbo Edition. Eight box. Pick your team number 10. All card ship. A lot of great stuff. About an hour long break. So let's let's get into it. We'll do a recap at the end of this. If you're re-watching this video, you can just skip to the end if you want to. But you might miss the inside jokes. So I don't know. Depends on what your priorities are. All right. Pick your team 10. Thanks, everybody. for So Kevin officially got last spot mojo. That star next to his name. 70% of the time, last spot mojo hits 100% of the time. If you have a little rooftop next to your name, that means you won that spot in the team random filler that we did. That double rooftop from Cody means that he won an extra spot in the team random, then got randomized the White Sox. So on and so forth. So, thanks everybody. All right, so let's pop this case open. Let's see what we got here. So six box break. I should take this out of our inventory system. I gotta get used to doing that before I start the video. And we got another case of Jumbo loaded up, jazbeescasebreaks.com. If you wanna take a look at that. And we've got two box Super Jumbo breaks available as well. Those are random team breaks. And the next two boxer, I believe, is from a fresh case. So if that matters to you, be sure to check that out. All right, and away we go. So in Jumbo, you get three autographs per box on average. Spring is around the corner, which means pitchers and catchers reporting. Spring training is gonna happen. Hope springing eternal for so many teams. I think pretty much, except for Carlos Correa, his deal is still up in the air, and I think we're still trying to figure out what's happening there, but but that's pretty much the only big name that's kind of out there in the wind. Joe Pizzle, of course, uh, is in Arizona, and he's got a little sideline, getting some autographs for, from some prospects. So it's that time of year for Joe Pizzle as well. I gotta go out with him uh, sometime on, on an outing. Joe, I've been trying to carve out some, the next time I'm gonna be in Arizona, my, uh, my friend, his wife and his kids uh, live um, right, it's like kind of around the corner, maybe half a mile, a mile from the, from the talking stick facilities where the Diamondbacks and Rockies shared that monster facility there. Salt Flats, Salt River Flats in Scottsdale. Now, if I'm if I pop in for a quick weekend, not quite sure if the schedule will allow me to I mean, I'll just basically have to yeah, the Salt River Fields, right? So I basically will have to, I'm at the behest of the, the baseball schedule because I'm gonna have to work around just work schedule and not game schedule. So I don't know if I could make it across town where the Dodgers are. So I may be limited to the, uh, limited to the Salt River area, which is fine. There's a lot. I don't, I don't mind too much, but I just love like getting the, the feel of spring training baseball. I think I did take a little longer just of the way the holidays fell. I was able to, to carve out a sort of a longer vacay over the holidays. I, think, I, don't think that, I don't think that might be the same next year. These aren't numbered by the way, so I'll just breeze by these. So I don't think it's gonna be the same thing this upcoming year. So maybe I'll save 
do less holiday time this upcoming year and maybe save a little bit longer time for spring training in 2024 as sort of a longer trip. So I don't know, I'll figure that out because I kind of want to do a sort of deeper experience. Oh yeah, the Giants are right there too. Giants facilities are right there. And we got Cutter Coffee to four ninety nine. Right, yeah, I definitely want to see some more action, but I want to dip my toes in it maybe this year. There's Judd Fabian, our first of three autos in this box. 130 out of 150. Bartholomew with the Orioles. Second round pick. Tamar Johnson. Paper for Chris Butler and the Pirates. Now, since this, since this is a draft, a lot of spring training, we're looking at a lot, a lot of uh, kids will be invited to camp. Joe, who are Joe Pizzle? Who are uh, who are some uh, up and coming names that you're looking for? Joe's a big baseball guy, so he knows his stuff. Or at the very least, knows knows who everyone else is chasing. You know, so. Who are some of the big names that, that you're trying to chase this spring? Jackson Curio, yeah, for the, uh, that's the Brewers Curio, right? Jason Curio is the, is Cleveland? Yeah, you know, um, Craig Council, oh, there's Ellie De La Cruz right there. That'll go to Joe Pizzle, so you can, yeah, so now Joe, you need a paper, you can get him to sign that. So uh, Brewers manager Craig Council was saying and during, over the winter meetings, you know, just because the Brewers are kind of going through some changes here that they're like, hey, we may even just, if Jackson Curio has a good camp, we may just start him. You know what I mean? We may just, uh, we may call him up. Forget about service time. It's Henry Williams, Padre, so Michael Higgins. So I think they're pretty high on that kid. Yeah, and Ellie De La Cruz for the Reds. All right, those are some names to look at. Is Ellie De La Cruz going to get a major league job this year? There's Cole Young, purple paper to one to 250, that is, for the M's. That'll be for John. There's uh, Jason Curio, Jackson's brother. He's pretty good. Jason Curio is supposed to be pretty good, too. It's possible we may need one more year for Ellie De La Cruz. I guess, I don't know, who are the, who are the rookies that are, who are the rookies we're going to be chasing in 2023 product? It's Joe, uh, Joe Salas. Jose Salas, 117 out of 199. Aqua Lava for Devin and the Marlins. I don't think I'm really paying attention. I guess we'll have to find out who's actually going to come out of camp. And But like when Series 1 comes out, like who's going to be like the rookie that we're chasing in, in Series 1? Or early season product. There's Andrew Pintar, Speckle, Parallel. Not numbered, it'll ship. Oscar Colas, maybe? Jackson Holiday, of course. 
We're looking at him to appear in a couple years or so. For the Orioles, Bartholomew. It's Elijah Green for Jake Joe for the Nationals. Yeah, a lot of a lot of well, the Orioles have been bad for a while, Mike Tower. So they've been able to draft pretty high, and and some of those prospects are now starting to bear fruit. There's Troy Melton to 499 refractor autograph for Detroit. It'll be for Justin. All right, that was box one. We'll do an autograph recap at the end. We got our three autos. Rex is hoping, is thinking Oscar Claus is going to be a beast. Angel Martinez, maybe, made the 40-man for the, for the Guardians. Ooh, th there you go. There's a name. I'm trying to think of, like, hyped names from, like, these draft products that are finally going to be rookies. Anthony Volpe should, be, should have the RC on his card starting 2023, right? See him with the RC logo. Yeah, that's one of the names. That's one of the names. <laughs> yeah, you got to think Volpe has got to be called up, right? Volpe? Volpe? I think he was drafted right out of high school. Right, he was he had committed to Vanderbilt, but I think he got drafted, got a nice bonus back in 2019. 19, 20, 20. He's about 21 years old. But he'll be 22 at the end of this April. So yeah, he's that's that's about time, right? If he has a nice camp, he might be able, he might skip triple A. Or maybe they'll service time him and he'll be in triple A for a month. And if he rakes there. Ooh, Corbin Carroll, RC logo. Is Adley, Adley Rushman wasn't RC logo last year? Maybe he is RC logo this year. All right. Oh, Holiday. Another Jackson Holiday paper. Uh, Casas for Boston. Tristan Casas. There we go. All right, so there'll be some there'll be some names that that have been kind of hyped in years prior. We're finally starting to see those guys coming up. It'll be good to see. Oh, Josh Young for Texas. All right, that's another name. That's kind of what I love about ooh, Francisco Alvarez, right? That's the uh, Mets catching prospect. That would be nice. Big market team. Um, a catcher who can hit. People always love a catcher who can hit. And on a team that's going to get a lot of TV time this year. Have they released like the, the national baseball schedule yet? Like the TV schedule? I don't think so, right? All the ESPN Sunday nights, Sunday night baseballs and Fox national games and all that sort of stuff. So Errol Vera for the Angels. 
That'll be for Tim. But I feel like we're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of the New York Mets on national television. There's a Jackson Holiday Chrome for the Orioles. That's for Bart. I'm talking about Anthony Volpe right here. Who are some players? What about some rookies last year that could have a bounce back sophomore year? Oftentimes there's a sophomore slump, right? Ooh, Cole Young, Mariners. All right, so first of all, we got Marco Luciano to 199. Michael with the Giants, Michael P. And then Mariners, Chrome Prospect autograph for Seattle John. I wonder how to... Well, I guess he was injured for chunks of time, right? If you put... But I feel like he was hitting well when he was healthy. I, I would love to see him put together, you know, like 150 plus games. And just rake. That'd be good for the hobby. Torkelson? I don't know what happened here. Look at that. The machine must have caught this. Yeah, Wander, Spencer Torkelson. I feel like there's question marks about about Joey Bart. You know, Giants, you know, he was supposed to be a guy, the guy. I know he's got big footsteps to follow, but behind um, Buster Posey, but Kalanick. Yeah, even though he wasn't a rookie last year, he needs to bounce back. Yeah, that, that would be nice. Brenner Cox, 199. Yeah, I mean, that would be good for the hobby. Say Suzuki. I feel like, uh, Suzuki had a decent... I feel like injuries caught up with him too, but I feel like he had a decent season last year. I'm talking more like guys that looked like just just weren't very good, you know? Like Torkelson just wasn't very good. You know, and that that's like a player that, that still has... You give him a long leash just because of the, you know, the draft position, the pedigree and all that sort of stuff. I'm talking more like those sort of players. And Kalanick could be could be certainly in there. Suzuki is in that sort of wander category where there's where injuries really derail them more than just ineffectiveness. There's Drew Thorpe. So actually, I think that was our the redemption was our first of three autos in this box, and this is our second Drew Thorpe. Although Mike Tower likes Riley Green more than Spencer Torkelson. I'd like to see Riley Green do well, too. Paper Elijah Green for Jaik and the Nats. Noel V. Marte could get the call for the Reds. We're talking about Jordan Lawler, too. Joe Pizzle's Diamondbacks has a little... Uh, they've got a crop of youngsters that could... You know, if they're a little ahead of schedule, could be fun to watch. And behind Nick York is Trey Sweeney to two fifty. Do we only get two autos out of here? There's the first three, and there's only two. Hmm. 
Did I miss one? I don't think I did. Hmm. Maybe we'll have an extra auto in the next box. Trey Sweeney to a 250 will be for the Yankees. That'll go to uh, that'll go to Devin in New York. Mike Tower uh, is scouting a. Uh, Scouting Jackson Holiday. He's a six tool player. The six tool being being his hairdo. A little, little sunshine for Member of the Titans. <coughs> Trevor Lawrence had that sort of look too, right? Ah, Gabriel Moreno. Joe Pizzle is saying. Speaking of, why are the Dimex and Suns selling part of the share of Well, the Suns, I guess Rex not really following up on this. Suns' oh, principal owner uh, got into a lot of trouble for, uh, for a hostile work environment. A lot of, uh, a lot of crude jokes. Both men and women. A lot of, lot of, lot of N word dropping. That's not good. Um, there was a whole thing about it. They did a big investigation, big report, and and so. And although he wasn't explicitly told to sell the team, I think, I think just all, all the reports there, you know, just naturally led to public outrage, which, you know, and I think he's like, it's probably best for me to sell my majority share of the team, blah, 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 blah. And there's Jace Young. I believe this is a uh, one per case. I think this is Josh Young's brother. Younger brother? Uh, Justin with the Tigers. So yeah, so that's why the Suns are being sold, have been sold, I think. I think some hedge fund dude bought, bought the Suns. So I think that ownership drama is finally, finally over. Team can move on, which is probably for the best. There's Walter Ford, 48 out of 199. John with that one. Yeah, well, hey, he's a he's a public figure. That's there's a very big difference. You know, Rex, you can say whatever you want. You know, in the privacy of your own home, but you're not running a multi-billion dollar franchise, right? You're not in the public eye. You know, there's some, uh, just as a professional, there's some responsibilities that you have. And you know, when you're running an organization, it's not just a corner store, you know? So yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's, uh, you're under the microscope. Although I have to say that the 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 former Suns owner stuff was pretty bad, you know, it's not like I don't know. I'm trying to think of a. I mean, it's all degrees, right? But I but I mean, it's like know, maybe like the John Gruden emails, right? Maybe you know inappropriate, you know. Not something you want to 
you want to say, but if you re just read what what the sun donor did, it was it's it's pretty bad. Why people have a ten? Well, I mean, it's not. A, I mean, it's like you're running a multi-billion-dollar franchise, and if you're a bad leader, <laughs> you know, I think that's why the attention is there. And you know, it's you know, you're you're responsible for for that workplace. You know, there's certain things that come with that responsibility for running a multi-billion-dollar professional basketball franchise, <laughs> right? Yeah, and he was cheap, right? There's Kansas City, that'll be for Tim. Zach Needle will go to the Angels, also for Tim. It's 99. So it, it was legitimately, legitimately bad. This isn't like woke police coming after, you know, coming after him. It was definitely a lot of just workplace stuff that you just shouldn't do, especially as a, as a, as a leader, as a, the owner. <laughs> it's like stuff just owners just can't do. But when you run a franchise like that, you're, you open yourself up to, up to public scrutiny. Like I said, it's not like he was owning, he was running a, a corner store that no one cares about. A major franchise. Uh, but the Diamondback selling part ownership, that I, I, I don't know what's going on there. I feel like I get the sense just around the sporting world. Remember, Bart gets all of those uh, those Jackson holidays. Jaik gets all of the Nationals. I feel like a lot of clubs are selling stakes of their team. Just because, I don't know, maybe... Valuations of teams are at an all-time high. What did the Sun sell for? You know. So I know my soccer club, Liverpool, is looking to sell part ownership. You know, or maybe sell the entire team. I feel like there's a couple other teams that are just kind of exploring those ideas. Hey, you know, they look at like how much Chelsea Football Club sold for. They look at what the Sun sold for. You know, they look at what the Clippers sold for not, you know, a few years ago. You know, then you start to think, you know, if if the Washington Commanders, if they sell, you know, yeah, four billion for both the Suns and the Mercury. So when you start seeing all that, you know, then you see, then you then you start thinking about owners who are like, huh, can I can I cash in a little bit here on these valuations? There's Jonathan Cannon paper to 499 for the White Sox. That'll be for Cody. So you start thinking that. Now Logan Tanner for the Reds. Class of 2022 autograph gold refractor parallel. That is for, I'm pretty sure it's Joe Pizzle. Joe Pizzle. Nice. Got into the team random. Got the Reds and gets a Logan Tanner. I don't know much about this guy, but hopefully he's good. It's a gold parallel too. All right, very nice, this Joe. So he's happy. If he's happy, I'm happy. So that's our third auto of the box. No, we only had two in the other one. Maybe we'll get a bonus auto somewhere. We do say on average, so we just kind of have to live with it. Which jerseys would look nice with a Jaspies patch on it? Like if we were to sponsor like a sleeve patch? I don't know, any 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 jersey that with the with a uh there's Drew Thorpe to fifty. Any like white jersey, any like home jersey would any patch would work well against that background. Maybe not with pinstripes. All right, next box. Ooh, how about that, Joe? Devin's got a fun little idea. After you redeem the redemption, you should get him to sign the redemption. 
I remember at the height of the Luka Doncic rookie card, like, uh, this was even pre-pandemic, the height of Luka Doncic rookie card chasing and just collecting frenzy, I remember people selling redeemed redemptions of him on eBay for not like an insig insignificant amount of money. I think like maybe like 50, 60 bucks a pop or something like that. And it was, there, were, there was no, it like it, in the title, it was like redeemed redemption. Description, this has been redeemed. And people are selling it for like 50, 60 bucks. What's up, Tradiac? Yeah, Husky Dolphin. At the height of like Luka Doncic, uh, Luka Doncic uh, chasing, collecting. Is that still happening? Yeah, they still do for the higher end cards. Yeah, there is a market for expired. It's crazy. Mike's asking, when a player is sitting down and signing sheets of stickers, how many autos can they sign in one sitting before getting tired or sore? I don't know. But I have seen, maybe a few years ago at a Panini event, I remember seeing, um, remember seeing some players, maybe Paxton Lynch was one of those guys, um, carrying three ring binders. And I want to say, um, some of you like at work may have like mailing labels or shipping labels or something like that. I think there were like labels, however big a sticker is, right? You know, maybe just maybe four across. Does that make a full page? Yeah. So maybe those small stickers about four across and then all the way down. So they were carrying those around with the special pens and just kind of, I think they're just encouraged just to sign, you know, whenever you have a chance, basically. You know, let's say, let's say, I don't know, you're sitting on a plane, you know, traveling to the next game. You know, take a little time, sign some stickers. It's all money. You know, at these events, they'll get them to sit down for an hour and just be like, hey, sign as much as you can, turn in those stickers directly to us so we can start using them. There's Sedan Rafella to 199 paper. Maybe they're on a trainer's table, their legs are getting worked on. And you just sign some stickers. There's Walter Ford to 150, and Dylan Lesko for the Padres. Michael Higgins with the Friars. Yeah, I guess people are buying those expired redemption to try to flip them for points or care packages. Joe Pizzle has a buddy that sent in a 90s collector's choice basketball redemption. You laughed when he said he was going to contact them. But they ended up uh, they ended up responding to him, said they'll said to mail it to them and they'll send a care package. Hmm. Oh, not collector's choice, but whatever it was, it was like a tops thing. 
John with Seattle to 150. Zach Veen, remember those blue colored ones are not numbered, but that's why I'm breezing by those, but they will ship, of course. Kevin Alcantara to 150. You go, wasn't this guy a, wasn't this guy supposed to be a big name? Maybe we'll see him. And a Jackson Holiday Chrome card. Oh, it's all all guitars on the forty man. So there you go. That I feel like that's a name that I remember for a number of years. Maybe he's getting close. And there's Drake Baldwin, fifty six out of seventy five. Started from the bottom. Now we're here. The ATL Justin with the Bravos, third rounder. Wasn't Alcantara somewhere else before? No, maybe I'm thinking of someone else. No, just Yankees and Cubs. Who was the guy, Joe Pizzle, who was... Or, and this opened to everybody, I guess, who was a Braves international prospect, like maybe somewhere in South America or something, uh, possibly Cuba. And then Atlanta got involved in, a, in that little uh, international signing bonus scandal, which I got one of, the, one, of the, one of the executives, one of the front office guys suspended from baseball for life or something like that. And then they had to release all of those guys and then he went to the Angels, I want to say. I don't know if he's still there. Ah, yeah, Kevin Maitan. Thanks, Sox Life. Nice. Good pull. And he was like in upper deck sets and stuff like that with the Angels. Yeah. What's he doing? What's he up to? I haven't heard anything. I feel like he was supposed to be a guy. 34 out of 50, Michael Knorr. For Daisuke and the Astros. Just being buried in that bad Angels organization. Oh, he was in the Fall League last year. Okay. All right. All right. Still grinding. Different Kevin. Landon Sims for the Snakes. Kevin. Kevin M. Different Kevin M. This is Ke Kevin Miyakawa. Bought the Diamondbacks. Ended up with Last Ball Mojo. A lot of Kevin M is happening here. We got Simon Juan. To 499, Mets paper for Stephen Carney. 338 out of 499. Let's 
Speaking of the White Sox, uh, manager. Now the White Sox, what's what's their managerial situation? Did I miss that news over the winter? I feel like a lot of things happen. Oh, Pedro Griffel. KC, got it. White Sox, White Sox, all for the last few years, and I'm, maybe I'm sure Sox life will probably feel the same way. On paper, this team looks always looks like you know. On paper, it always looks like man, this team's going to be great. They're, they're going to win 95 plus games, you know. AL Central's not that scary. Yeah, injuries were bad last year. And then, uh, but yeah, then like injuries happen and this and that happens. And then, yeah, bad defense. Defense underrated. Really underrated. All right, Crochet was lost before the year. Yeah, Garrett Crochet being lost. But you got... Lucas Giolito, Lance Lynn, Dylan Cease, Kopech, guys like Clevenger in there. Oh, poor Liam Hendricks doing, now he's battling cancer, yeah. And yeah, you guys lost Garrett Crochet before before the year. But then you got, you got guys like Grandal, I like Andrew Vaughn, you know. Mankata, Tim Anderson, Dodgers could have used a, a fiery guy like Tim Anderson in last year's playoffs. You know, Eloy, Luis Robert, so on and so forth. Other youngsters coming up the ranks, too. But yeah, Eloy always gets hurt. That's true. Bre breaking news. Building a, building a baseball team. Winning the World Series. Hard. To 499, we've got Tristan Veerling, Yankees paper for Devin. Right, yeah. How are, how are those uh, how are those Braves rookies gonna do do next year? There's Sedan Rafaela to twenty five. Nice. And yeah, we were just talking about them a little bit earlier. Like what what sort of bad rookies or down rookies from last year will improve this year? And I guess the the extension of that question now is like, and one of the examples was like Spencer Torkelson, right? Like we want to see Torkelson. Be good for the hobby if he does if he does well next year, right? He's got a long leash because of his draft position and stuff, but you know, and his and his measurables. But but yeah, I guess the extension of that question is is what rookies will avoid the sophomore slump, to keep things going. You know, yeah. So, how does what like the the Har Michael Harris's, the Grissoms, the Spencer Striders, how are they going to look? 
you know, next year. Because if they keep it going, I mean that, you know, that Braves team is gonna be is gonna be pretty scary. They got a lot, a lot of the a lot of their players locked up in really team friendly contracts, so they've got their players to buy in and do all that. You know, they got Austin Riley to sign early. They got Cunha Albies to sign early. And for multiple years too. Michael Hernandez for uh, Bart and the O's. Hmm, that's a good rebound candidate. Jonathan India, I like that. Yeah, Christian Pache was supposed to be great. I, I had, I'm pretty sure I had uh, drafted him on for uh, multiple years in a row on my fantasy team, hoping he'd end up being like a... Uh, like a 2020 guy at least, you know? You know, just a nice little bench guy. It's Ben Joyce for the Angels. That's going to be for Tim Leahy. I'm very curious to see how how the uh, the changes, the rule changes in baseball, what that's going to produce. I've heard different arguments. You know, like like oh the the shift is gone, so now Joey Gallo is going to be is just going to start raking. And then you're just like, well, Joe, Joey Gallo still swings and misses a lot. I'm not sure if the shift is going to help him one way or the other. I don't know if his, like, Babbitt was, like, any better or worse because of, <laughs> because of the shift. There's a Connor Prelip to 99 for the Twins. Oh, there you go, Jack Leiter. Yeah, does he get an RC logo this year? Joe Pizzle thinks he does. But, you know, I think that's one big change, the shift. And I'm sure fan graphs or any of the fantasy baseball sites will definitely have some breakdowns on who's going to benefit the most from the shift from last year, using all that info. There's Luis Angel Acuna to 199. But yeah, and the other change I was gonna mention, yeah. Um, base sizes, base, si base sizes are slightly bigger. And we've talked about how second base has literally been moved in a little bit as well. And that angle changes a little bit, but base sizes are bigger, does that you know, how many stolen base attempts have you seen that are just another Ben Joyce? Tim, you're starting a Ben Joyce PC, whether you intended to or not. You know, so how does that change stolen bases? Oliver, what's going on? Happy New Year. Good to be back. Yeah, shift might help Muncie, Oliver. You know, now, maybe you... Maybe that helps some the, the position players as well. Maybe more close plays at first too. And remember, there's only a limited amount of time um, that you can throw over to a base. So there's that too. I think in spring training, there's gonna be a lot more practice on, on catchers, you know, practicing uh, 
throwing to second. Well, I, I don't think Max A's Max Muncy is going to be called up this year, so. Definitely Dodgers Max Muncy, but if A's Max Muncy gets called up someday, yeah, that's going to be pretty complicated. Took has an idea that you think would spark tremendous interest in baseball and make the end of games awesome, would also speed up games. Hmm. What is your, what, what is your idea? Instead of extra innings, a home run derby shootout. Wow. Is it, that's, that's what's going to get the key demographics there. All right. That seems a little too Savannah Banana. And I think there's been a little oversaturation. A little oversaturation of the home run. Which is why I think baseball has made these rules to try to put more... Because they've done the studies and stuff. I, th I think more people want... Like, what's more exciting? A home run? Or a triple? You know? So, I mean, they... I mean, it might just be oversaturated to see a home run derby at the end. It'll just be like watching batting practice, I guess, is what it would amount to, to being. But I, I don't like that runner on second, though. I do agree with you on that. I don't know if it changes. I don't know if that really even changes anything. I feel like the same amount of extra innings. I don't know. I'm sure there's studies on it. I should probably look this up, but... I wonder if there has been any actual actual changes, you know? In like how many times or how f how much faster an extra inning game actually becomes. Is Gabriel Rincons to 150? I don't know. Baseball, to me, is kind of like soccer in the way that, you know, you got to keep the game as, as sort of natural and as simplified as, as possible. So how, like, having, like, I don't know. I don't know if the gimmicky idea really works for a sport like baseball. At least for me. Still a little more traditionalist, but. Who chooses who's on second and next? I, that I actually don't know. I thought it was just the, the, do you get to choose a runner or is it like the person who was hitting previously that made the last out or something or, or is that not the case? Or I guess, would that be a pinch runner situation if you put someone else in there? There's Tanner Scoble, 144 out of 150. That's for the Twins, Raymond. Devin says last out of the inning, okay. I think that's what it is. And then, and then oftentimes you'll see them just do a pinch runner or something like that. Extra innings decided by essay questions, says Mike Tower. I'm not sure if that's gonna go over well. Did you know that in terms of traditional uh, education, baseball players are the least classically, uh, classically educated of the major sports? A lot more kids these days are just going straight from high school to... Uh, to the to the pros getting drafted and getting in part of the part of that, even the NBA. 
you know. Or exactly, because they've been drafted out of high school. Even even the NBA, you know, for, for, for whatever you think they're doing for their one year of college, you know, those kids still have to go to class. They still have to go do that bare minimum. You know, NFL, you know, just you're seeing kids in college for at, at least three years, right? Most are doing four. So I'm thinking that the ML that the uh, players association are gonna be like, yeah, no thanks on the uh, no thanks on the SA stuff. Yeah, Sox life is right. Soccer, too. A lot of soccer players, especially the elite ones who are identified, you know, pretty early, you know, are, are yeah, are taking us. I mean, they go to their, the soccer club's academies, but, I mean, who knows what the, uh, what the education standards are for Barcelona's youth academy, right? There's Gavin Cross to 150. It's for Kansas City. That's going to be for Tim. Although I wonder, I'm actually now I'm curious, what is the education level in a youth academy if you're like, I don't know, in the high school, if you're like under 16s at Barcelona's youth academy and you're getting, uh, you're getting some education there? What is, do you think it's just, you know, the usual school BS or do you think they're actually getting more relevant like education, like are they, as a high schooler, are you getting more, taking more like business classes? Are you taking more like, is it tailored more to what your career may be in the future? You know? I mean, past like basic sciences. Uh, you think it's just GED type stuff? All right. In my head, I was just like, man, it'd be cool if they're like, hey, here's how to, here's a, here's a, a basic contract law class. Ain't nothing too crazy, but like, you know, just something on like simplify to a high school level or something like that. Maybe not. Maybe I'm, maybe, maybe I'm just too optimistic there. Ah, okay, okay. So like the IMG academies in Florida, they teach like life skills. Yeah, like that should be, I, I always had this thing where I was like, there should be like a school who has a pro athlete, you know, should be able to declare like a major that will help them, like a specifically, that would specifically help them, you know, it would be a special course tailored to them. So instead of taking like, I don't know, yeah, a math class just to fill a requisite or something like that they had like a like a pro athlete degree i don't know something like that it's some hockey over time they go to four on four three on three so extra in it. see i don't know if that works i i, I think trying to baseball is such a unique sport trying to apply like like what they do in like hockey or soccer to to baseball just i mean just seems just doesn't work there's Elijah Green, nice, 499 out of 499, flipped around. Refractor autograph for Jaik Jo, about the Nationals straight up. Nice, your fifth overall pick. Son of former pro football tight end Eric Green. Yeah, the last one to the last one he ever signed. I don't know if that's true, but we'll say we'll just say it's the last one he ever signed. Well, we got another number back here. There's Troy Melton to 199. Did Elijah Green? Yeah, I saw it in Florida. Did he go to IMG? He planned to attend uh, the U. But yeah, I was born in Windermere, Florida.
Yeah, and baseball JCs have a lot of great players. Yeah, uh, former uh, former coworker here, my colleague Thomas Baton, did the JC route here in Southern California. And went to a local JC here and then worked his way through there and uh, ended up transferring to Cal State Northridge, which is a pretty decent baseball school down here. He's, a, he's pretty good, I think. He's supposed to be a weekend starter. We we'll try to catch some games of his. So. That route is there. He went to the same JC that uh, Garrett Cooper went to. Marlins guy? Garrett Cooper uh, was at a JUCO around here. And then uh, transferred to Auburn. Oh, nice. He went to Cal State Fulton and had some classes with Justin Turner. Yeah, I hope, I hope after Justin Turner retires, he comes back to the Dodgers and does something coaching, some coaching with him. Yeah, Oliver, I, that's what he, he, he was, uh, I don't know if you ran into him over the winter, but he did a few, uh, he put in a few shifts here and there. A little, little winter break money. But yeah, he was saying that, that, uh, is he 90, at 97? I thought he was saying he, he's consistently consistently uh, in mid-90s, like 94, 95. He's, if he's touching 97, that's pretty good. And then, like, decent pitch mix, too. Got, got some good off-speed stuff. He was telling me some, some stats and some scrimmage games. I think uh, – I don't know. For me, young pitchers, right, reduce those walks. Wow, using that D1 rate room. I love it. <laughs> wow. He came, Justin Turner came into class after the College World Series the year we won, and he got hit in the face. That's right. Came into class, had a little toothy loss and a little pouch on the necklace. I love it. I love it. What's up, Dash? What's going on, Greg? Happy New Year. Yeah, Oliver. I was talking to Thomas. He says he loves it. He's 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 like he's in his element, you know. He said his he said like his his apartment is right across the street from campus, so he just wakes up, works out, goes to class. He says he's actually enjoying class. Like he's doing well in his classes. So he feels good about that. So I think he's locked in. He's locked in. So hopefully I'm going to try to catch his his games. His start should be on Fridays and Saturdays. That's what he was saying. And so I think I'm going to, especially if he pitches down here, try to try to catch some of his games. Or maybe I'll have to go over the hill and watch his games too. But. But yeah, yeah. Thomas, always, you know, from the get-go, since he was working here, he always he always had an interest in uh in like broadcast journalism and stuff like that. So. What about Justin Turner? Was he nice? Kurt Suzuki seems like a nice guy. Yeah, he carved out a real nice career. Night's going well, Greg. Happy New Year. The gang's been keeping me busy. JT was just was okay. It's just okay. Never know. Never know with those guys. Thomas is legitimately nice. There's Chase Meadroth for Boston. That's gonna go to Kevin. Matt McLean going to the Red Legs. That's for Joe Pizzle. It's to 150. Joe 75 out of 150.
Ricky Romero was super nice. One of uh, one of our old coworkers. Good uh, good buddies with Ricky Romero. He's been by the shop a few times. His twin daughters play, what, Ricky Romero's twin daughters play in the same soccer league as your daughter? Yeah, there was, there was a, there was a window of time where Ricky Romero's stuff was, well, he's just on point. There's Kumar Rocker to 199. Oh, Suzuki. Twin daughters. Ricky Romero, super nice. Been by the shop a couple times. Yeah, especially those Toronto years. And a redemption. It looks like purple chrome. It's Tamar Johnson. Nice. We got it. We got an Elijah Green in there. Some other great prospects. And add Tamar Johnson to the pile. That's Chris Butler with the Pittsburgh Pirates. I feel like Chris has been having a nice run over the last few weeks with this draft stuff. There you go, Chris. That is strong. Out of 250. There he is, Tamar Johnson, fourth overall pick. Yeah, not a bad case, right? I mean, if we can find like even a non-auto train whistle in here somewhere out of five and under, I would that would be the nice little cherry on top of this. Case cake. We got Jared McKenzie to fifty. This video is hour eight minutes. Man. Take a couple weeks off for winter break. Just not, and I thought I was going fast too. Take a couple weeks off and listen, I just, I, I gotta, this is like spring training for me now. I gotta, I gotta get my, uh, I gotta get my pitch count worked up. I gotta get the arms stretched out. There's Joshua Baez to 25 orange paper. Jimmy Crooks, I'm not a Crooks. 21 out of 25. Orange Chrome autograph, Cardinals, Michael Higgins. Red Birds. All right. Final box. Final three autographs, and then I'll do a quick autograph recap, and that is it. I'll be back tomorrow, 3 o'clock Pacific, 6 o'clock Eastern. Uh, yeah, I need to do a few few breaks with weights on the end of them just to get back into shape. I need a training montage. You know, hearts on fire. And then I'll run up to a, the top of a mountain, and I'll be like, Bowman! Bowman! Bowman. 
Yeah, Grayson Rodriguez, the Orioles pitcher, right? How's he going to do? I feel like the, when's the last time the Orioles have drafted and, and developed a frontline pitcher? I feel like it's Mike Mussina, maybe? Was that the last one? I, I feel like that just they just I feel like they, they've been able to draft and develop hitters, but for whatever reason, I feel like pitching has always been a struggle for them. I, yeah, I guess Dylan Bundy is pretty solid. I mean, that's a recent, more recent example. Yeah, Musina, right? All right, again, last break of the night. Back three o'clock Pacific, six o'clock Eastern. Uh, what's what? What are we watching tomorrow? Oh, college football uh, playoff championship tomorrow. Is that tomorrow? That's tomorrow. Who does everyone have in that? I don't know. Am I making a play? Did Cedric Mullins have a rough year last year? Yeah, maybe a bounce back for him. Rain is the the rain is the winner. Is it going to rain tomorrow? 100 out of 250, Tanner Scoble. Oh, is it raining tomorrow? So I have to, I have to get out of the, I have to, I have to get out of the house a little bit earlier than normal. Is Trey Gonzalez, 78 out of 250, for the Pirates. Chris Butler with the paper. All right, because the game's at SoFi, and I pretty much drive by that every day. And there's a college football game, so that. And rain. That's what I hear. I hear the waves were crazy around here with all the rains. There's Jackson Holiday. That's another. These are usually one per case, I think, but sometimes we'll get two, sometimes zero. Bartholomew, Orioles, nice. That's awesome. Maybe it's not one per case. Maybe it's just short printed, but still nice. Owen Murphy, Braves. Justin. Well, I'm glad. I mean, I know there's the downside is a lot of flooding, a lot of mudslides, a lot of a lot of power outages, dangerous situations. But on the flip side, it's nice getting like a uh, nice getting some uh, some of the reservoirs filled, some of the Northern California snowpack packed in. That's going to be good for. California and the Southwest trying to ride out a uh, this crazy drought that we're having. I mean, I still need like a couple more years of this to to even get back to a comfortable position and to sustain it. Walter Ford. Well, the, the mudslides won't put out the wildfires. The, the, the wildfires create the mudslides. It's the other way around. Because all the wildfires will burn up the brush. And then there's no vegetation there. No like trees, no deep roots to kind of, or just any kind of roots to just hold dirt together. And then there, when there's a sudden influx of rain, that's where you get the mudslides. So. Mudslides will not be helping wildfires. There's no wildfires. It's the middle of the rain, too.
There's Yendry Rojas to 99 and Blake Burkhalter. 264 out of 499 refractor autograph for Justin and the Braves. Rain does hamper the golf game a little bit. I think I, I was in Vegas and I still was able to hit up a driving range with a little sprinkling out there. Oliver, did you watch the golf this weekend? The Century Tournament of Champions? And see Colin Moore College just blow it? And John Rahm shoot a 63 to win it? If that's the way the season's going to be, if that's the way 2023 is going to be, it could be an exciting PGA year. There's Jacob Misarowski to 499. Yeah, they're doing, so they made some changes to the PGA Tour in 2023. There, there's more so-called elevated events, more designated elevated events in order to get better fields, you know. Oh, you work with a woman who is good buddies with Colin Morikawa. Her brother is one of his best friends. Yeah, I found a fan of Morikawa. I feel like uh, I feel like he's you know, after the big open win. I don't know. He's still really young. So it's really it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, live golf is a little lame. I mean, take, just take all the, whatever you, whatever people's opinions are about, you know, the morality of, of it or whatever, just watch the live golf. It's just not, it's just not a good product. So I don't know what they're going to, I mean, sure, they got some names and, and everything, but it's just not... It's just not that fun to watch. This is Bryce Hub Hubbard. It's so bad. I mean, yeah. I mean, like, again, just give it a shot just, just from an objective perspective and just take out whatever. You know, I've, I've got my personal feelings about it. You know, I, I don't know if I'd be joining Live Golf, to put it that way. But, you know, but I don't know. Just the the, 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 sh the the shotgun starts the fifty four holes, the teams are a little weird. I don't I don't, I don't know I don't know if I like that team concept. I, I you know I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what happens with the golf this year too because now what are what are they what else are they gonna do? You know so. Thanks, David. We try to keep things as family friendly or at least as PG as possible around here. Not a bad break. Some nice stuff. Two of these short prints. Really happy with it. There you go, gang. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. That was 2022 Bowman Draft Baseball. Eight box jumbo. Pick your team 10. The next one is in the store right now. Go get your teams before someone else does um, or before it ends up in some kind of filler. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'll see you next time for the next baseball break. Bye.